important and fun to do this kind of more ridiculous stuff so people know, oh, you know, she has a sense of humor. Yeah. Tuesday night festivities, but Uncle Hanato is going to, you know, force you to do OnlyFans. Don't, no, he's not. <laughs> and he's trying to get me to hashtag release the cheeks and stuff like that. Like, no. There will be no KB OnlyFans. There will KB will not be releasing the cheeks. May fans, I am being joined by the most talented and well-rounded broadcaster we have in the game today. It is Karen Bryan. She is taking the time out of her day before fight night tomorrow with Bilal Muhammad and Vicente Luque to do this interview with me. So I am so excited. How are you, Karen? I'm great, Alex. You're too kind. You're too, you're sweet. Oh my God, you're sweet. I'm excited because you've done everything from red carpets, entertainment, politics, yeah. all type of different broadcasting what would you say led you to MMA and now you're sticking with MMA and combat sports um you know I did entertainment kind of reporting for so long and, and that kind of anchoring and it's fun and it is really exciting but uh I think just sort of the idea of getting into the sports side of it where like I really don't know what's going to happen going to work is really cool I mean actually the transition wasn't that hard. Um, I just ended up having an, an interview with Showtime Sports and then started working with them. So the actual sort of process from one to the other wasn't too hard. But of course, it's a whole learning to, to kind of talk to people in a different way and different kinds of things. But, um, you know, the, the, I don't know. I, I've always loved sports. I was played sports when I was younger. So it wasn't a crazy transition for me, but I had done the entertainment thing for so long that it was nice to try something else. It definitely translated well. Always watching the pre-fight and post, fo uh, post shows for UFC fight nights. So I have a couple of trivia questions for you because okay. your YouTube page is so entertaining. Not just all the um, segments you have today from yeah. what had happened was to Tuesday night fest festivities with Hinato Laranja. Yeah. I'm talking about the throwbacks. Okay. So I want to talk about oh, some no. funny throwbacks that right. we have. Mm -hmm. So first we're going to start off with an easy one. Yeah. Somewhat, somewhat current. Name this welterweight that co-hosted with you on M on your MMA Heat YouTube series. Well, that would be Alan Jovan. Yes. <laughs> and bonus question, where is he from? Uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. Wow. Yeah. So you guys are close. It's not just, you know, a purely business on camera. You guys are friends outside of this. Oh, and yeah. best. Oh, no. Oh, absolutely. He's amazing. Uh, his wife, Nicole, is awesome. Little KG Fresh, his son. Like, you know, we did a bunch of shows together uh, and, you know, podcasts and stuff. And then now he works with me at the desk. And that was something that I know he really wanted to kind of graduate to. And so for me, I feel good feeling like I helped him get here. So it's cool. I love Alan. Alan is awesome. And yeah, he's awesome. And, and the funny thing is you know you're friends with somebody when you sort of forget that they're good looking you know what I mean like you forget and so then he definitely yeah, is a good looking guy looking guy and uh, my friends are like yo and I'm like wait really and then and there I remember though there'd be a couple times we're doing the show I was like oh yeah 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 I see I see I see I see it I see it yeah that's definitely I, I miss that have you guys done one recently or we, you know we haven't and then um and then we started to do something together like a breakdown thing and then we get really busy and like you and I were talking off camera there's a lot of everything going on so I would say for now we haven't figured something out but we've always left the door open to come back to do something together Awesome. Well, I would definitely enjoy it. I can't wait to see you guys next time if you visit High Rollers again, because I know you guys kind of oh, yeah. sometimes go yeah. from the fight night to High Rollers. You know I love me some High You know I love me some High Rollers. I, yeah. We love them over there. Yeah, we we always want you uh, backstage hanging yeah, out with us. we come over so. whenever we can. If our show finishes in time, we all right, right over. Yes, our 420 event is coming up uh, tomorrow night, so there's going to be some fun matches there. But for your next question, you got that one right. That was yeah. an easy one, yeah, though. That was, that was an easy that one. Was pretty so, name this 90s sensation and heartthrob that won the 2007 Sexiest Man Alive by People magazine and told you live on the air that he's flirting with you. John Stamos. Yes! <laughs> How did you react to that? Um, that, well, it's... Is that uh, the best moment of your life? Like, that would be the highlight of my life. It was pretty good. It was, because he was, he was, well, how, suddenly this turned into, like, a hot guy interview which is whatever uh, i am single though by the way <clears throat> hey we uh, but um uh yeah no i i was very much taken aback like you don't expect somebody to do that and say that and at the time i guess his stamos was kind of 
tossing them back a little bit uh, historically. And so he would get in these interviews and say kind of wild stuff. So I cracked up. I thought it was really funny. But then we joke because I was married at the time. And I was like, oh, actually, I, this, I, I married this guy and he fights. And, that, and it just turned into a funny thing. But yeah, that's on my, um, like on my sizzle reel from my old job. Yeah. That was honestly the best moment, but you're so good at navigating situations. Obviously, you defused the situation with Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington backstage yeah. one day. So a lot of crazy things happen. But this star in particular, a comedian, he got his hands on you. Uh, it was a hug and he wouldn't let go. And you kind of just had to keep going with it. Okay, that was Howie Mandel, right? Okay, so Howie Mandel, I used to do a show called Showbiz Tonight, uh, and it was on uh, on CNN, and, and Howie Mandel came in, and he doesn't, you know, uh, touch, right? So if you watch America's Got Talent, and so, uh, yeah, so, like, he wouldn't shake my hand, but he would hug me, which I thought was strange. Yes, I remember watching Deal or No Deal uh, growing up, and I noticed that it was always, like, fist bumps. Yeah, but don't you think it's, I was like, you, but you'll, but you'll hug me. Yeah. It sounds like he's just like trying to skip, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was like you. It got. It felt a lot more personal than a handshake. You know what I mean? That's hilarious. Howie Mandel. Uh, I have never actually seen any of his stand-up comedy. I only see him as like a judge for things. But uh, very, very interesting guy. Yeah. No. He he was actually really cool. He was cool. He was cool. He was nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's that's three for three now. You're killing it. I, I will say, Alex, I should have maybe told you that I do have a very good memory, generally. Yes, you do have a really good memory. So. I was really impressed with when you were on the red carpet and you just delivered a hit that I know didn't have a teleprompter. Yeah. You just memorized that. What is the strategy going in when you're going to be in a 30-second time bubble? How do you prepare for those moments? That's, I don't know. You know, uh, I've always been a quick study on things. Um, if you ask my mom, she'll say that, you know, oh, she has a, like, a photographic memory, which I don't have, but I do, I can remember things very quickly and very well. I think it's just a muscle memory. It's a skill that you learn. Um, and so it's a matter of, you know, repetition. Um, it's a matter of, well, first and foremost, being prepared, knowing, knowing what you're going to talk about, I guess, is, is half the battle, right? So that you don't, you're not completely just like, oh no, what am I going to do? Uh, so you got to kind of know what you're supposed to talk about, but then, um, I don't know. It, I, I guess I don't think it's that hard to sometimes come up with some sound bites. But, um, but yeah, in terms of the actual memorization, you know, people who, you know, if, you, or if you're an actor or anything like that, everybody's got their little, their little tricks. But, you know, for me, writing down what, you, what you're going to say anyway helps instead of typing it. You know what I mean? Writing, actually writing it out by hand helps a lot. Um, and then just kind of going over it, repetition, trying to walk away from it as soon as you can, trying to get like off book with it, even before you're not off book, because then that way you may even, you, you may learn, you'll learn that even if I stumble, I can still pick up the story. Do you know what I mean? Because I think sometimes people, if they get a long piece, right, they get overwhelmed if they blow one word and then it throws off the whole rest of the thing. Sorry. Uh, so I think being able to improvise and kind of live in the moment and, and, and have a real great solid understanding of it, but don't necessarily worry about being exactly word for word will give you that liberty to play with the words a little bit more if you do find that you stumble. Interesting. And when would you say the market transitioned off the teleprompter and more just into talking casually? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. A lot more of it is when you're doing more things remotely and on, or on site, let's say like that. Uh, you know, when we first left, uh, when we first, when we used to do the shows over at Fox, we still had prompters for the shows because, and it was just you know, much more heavily scripted that we would work on. But we did that was for like UFC tonight and stuff like that, you know, with scripted. But when we would get on the road for, you know, post show and stuff like that, you can't script a post show. You know what I mean? Um, but sometimes they'll throw stats up in there for you and that kind of thing. But you know, the post show is always you're just living live in the moment. Um, so I don't know. I feel like for us in terms of the UFC, it was when we switched from Fox to ESPN. Uh, once we got on the road with ESPN, we didn't have any doesn't really matter, but I don't know if that's a policy that they always had. But for me, for for me in terms of MMA for coverage, yeah, it was when we swapped over, so that was 2019. Yeah. It's always so entertaining to yeah. watch. John Anik kicking off the pay-per-view, yeah. Megan O'Leary's hits. All of you guys do such a fantastic job, oh, and it's really inspirational. So the next one, I actually don't know the answer of okay. the fighter's name, but I heard some of it. You told this fighter that the one thing that may defeat him 
is those estrogens. Yeah, that was uh, King Mo. King Mo, and we were at, uh, it was a strike for, it was before he and Gay Guard were going to fight, uh, I believe. And it, we were in L.A., and it was a media day, and I believe it was at Legends, if people remember the old Legends gym and stuff like that. And, you know, King Mo is this, and he's this and that. And I did, yeah, I said that the one thing that could defeat him was his ashy skin. So were you guys close at all before? Or were you just no, like saying? Not really. You know what? I'll say anything to anybody because I feel like yeah. if you're like, <laughs> don't punch me, uh, then I think you can kind of get away with it. But also it was just funny. But we were joking. We were like, you know, what is it like? Like he's been boxing a bag of flour, you know, like that kind of thing. But it was his, I think it was his knees. You know, I know wrestlers get it. But yeah, I, I have always gone for the joke and for the laugh. Like I feel like, you know, it, yeah. Yeah, I'd rather have a playful, fun interview. So yeah, so he luckily didn't didn't get mad. That was such a funny moment. Uh, honestly, I, I remember watching yeah. that one, and I was just like, wow. Like I, I need to like kind of crack jokes like that yeah. with some of the fighters. It's good to play with them. I think so. I think yeah. so. And de I mean, obviously, depending on the situation, but it's a serious business. But it's also fun, right? We're here, I mean, really, we're not we're not solving world hunger here. We're getting punched in the face, right? So, uh, but it's but it's entertaining and it's primal and it's real and it's visceral, and I feel like people who work in such an intense environment need that levity to counterbalance it, right? So, yeah, a hundred percent. And when we think back to your interview with Steven Seagal after. UFC 126, Anderson Silva had just knocked out Vitor Belfort. Yeah. And uh, it was after, it was in the first round, and you asked uh, Steven Seagal, does this make Anderson Silva the goat in his eyes? Do you remember how he responded to that? Oh, gosh. He's a very philosophical guy. Yeah, what did he say? I remember the interview. He probably would have said, like the goat is already within him or something, you know, like yeah. something like, I don't remember what he said, but I remember the situation. It definitely speaks volumes of how everything ended up with Israel Adesanya kind of taking the place. He's like, he could be the best of our time right now, but in MMA that could change in five seconds. Uh, uh, all right, that's true. It is true. It is true. It is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steven Seagal, man, he, he has, I need to watch some of the other ones you have, but he was just very, like, harmonious and uh, so soft-spoken. I was like, wow, I can't believe this is, like, how he is. Yeah, he was, and we have, we have a couple, right, and we're at the one where he said he taught, um, he taught Anderson that kick that took Vitor out, uh, and, the, and, yeah, so he's, he's, a, he's a character, he's an entertaining guy. Okay, and this last one, uh -oh. who is the fighter that you told is a very good looking guy, and then you asked him if he finds sexy Yama to be sexy? Do, 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 do. At, we were in Philly, probably. I, it's, I was just talking about that sexy Yama interview today because I was like, the name is very fitting. Here's there, there's your trifecta of hot fighter guys uh, that we've already talked about to you others early. Um, well, Andy well, is a Hall of Famer. Was, was it Rashad? Nope. No. No, wait, because Rashad was there too. Andy was a Hall of Famer, and I said, I said, wait, so who was sexy? I'm a fighting then. Was he fighting Dan, Dan Hart? No. Who did, do you find sexy? I'm a Andy's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. And it wasn't Rashad? It wasn't Rashad. Bisping? Yes, okay. you got it. Okay, okay. Yes, nice, 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 yes. Nice. All, right. All right, I think you got like a solid B on that. I think okay. you got, you know, right. five five out of six. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's nice. Pretty good. That's I'm pretty I'm just happy you got the John Stamos one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember that. That was funny. That was, I was like, what is happening? What is happening? How did your husband respond to that? I mean, it was funny. It is funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, that's, uh, I wouldn't know how to react to that on live TV, so it's just so funny to watch from you and learn from you because you just have a very instinctive way to react to people. Yeah, I just try to, I just try to roll with it, you know what I mean? And it was funny, I mean, but I will say this, if somebody throws you a compliment, accept it, you know, accept the compliment, don't deny the compliment or don't, you know, maybe don't steamroll over it. So, I, it was funny though, yeah, it was, I, it was uh, not, not what I expected. <laughs>
And so right now we are at the fighter hotels because she's going to get some rest before tomorrow night. Fight night, Bilal Muhammad versus Vicente Luque. How excited are you for this fight? There's so I feel like the welterweight division has so much going on. So what do you think are the implications of the winner for this fight? Yeah, I'm really excited for this one because, uh, you know, I feel we've got a personal investment in these guys. I feel like, you know, I've known Vicente for a very long time now, the whole birth of the black with the black zillions and everything. Um, and with Bilal, you know, Alan was his first fight. And so, you know, like I've been watching Bilal ever since he was in there with my homie, you know what I mean? So um, it's been really cool to watch them both evolve. And like you just said, the welterweight division right now, I feel like it's like um, it's on display, right? Last weekend with Hamzat with how amazing that fight was with Gilbert. We know that this fight card has like three other, you know, or two other uh, great welterweight matchups on the main event, on the main card. Um, but yeah, you have number five versus number six. It could be a title eliminator for Vicente. I think with, you know, with Bilal, he might have to fight one more time since he's number six. But at the same time, he just beat Damian Maya before he beat Wonder Boy. He's beating big name guys. You know, uh, it's just that Vicente, they, Vicente's finishing ability is, I think, the one thing that maybe gives him, like, a slight edge right now. But look at where Colby is, you know? And Colby's getting great fights and Colby's getting great wins. And so, I mean, my God, I don't know. And I wonder if people are actually going to boycott Colby at all with the whole, like, calling the cops on Jorge Masvidal. Yeah, dude, that was not a good look. Uh, no, that was not a good That was a, come on, you don't call the cops. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's a bad look. It's a bad look. It's a bad look to jump somebody, but it's a bad look to call. I mean, in that situation, that was a poor, I thought that was a bad look to call the cops. But uh, as we know from hanging out at High Rollers, I am... Team Masvidal uh, in that situation. So. He loves Street Jesus. He stopped by High Rollers a, a, a little while back. I can't remember what a, event that was, but it was definitely a fun one. It was. Um, Hamzat and Gilbert Burns, that fight. Obviously, I just feel like the welterweight is so exciting. So would you think that a good matchup would be to make next Hamzat and Colby and then Gilbert can get the winner of the fight tomorrow? Exactly, exactly. That makes a lot of sense. And if if the winner is Vicente, then that adds a little bit of a difficulty. You know, I mean, but Gilbert is so right. Gilbert's so game and he'll fight anybody. And you know that they only want to fight each other when the stakes are this high. But yeah, mathematically, you know, I think it's sort of Colby kind of do or die has to take Hamzat, right? If he doesn't, I feel like he's going to get put on the shelf for a while, right? So I don't know how long it'll take him to heal up or whatever from the incident with Jorge or if that's a real, you know, not that it's not a real, I'm just saying, I don't know how long that'll take. Um, but I want to see Hamzat versus Colby. And yeah, the winner of Saturday's fight could definitely get Gilbert Burns or look at, you know, they could be Somebody, somebody could be a, a backup position for a title fight, right? An alternate if something happens. Like, you never know. I mean, I guess they would maybe make that Hamzat would be the first choice for the alternate if Leon is getting uh, Kamaru. But, yeah. Oh, my gosh. If anything else goes wrong with Leon getting this title. I know, I know. I'm like, uh, please let Leon get his fight. Yeah. Well, it's all very exciting stuff. Tomorrow is fight night, and then also High Rollers will be streaming live on YouTube. Should be able to catch both. Usually High Rollers doesn't start until after the fights, but Karen, thank you so much for the time. Can you just let the audience know all the things you're doing from Tuesday night festivities to everything on your YouTube channel? Yeah, okay, so you can either go to YouTube forward slash Karen Bryant, and I always say K-A-R-Y-N, Bryant as in Kobe, no relation, but may you rest in peace. Uh, so that's how you can find me over on YouTube, or you go to uh, festivities. Com and it's just, you know, F-I-S-T, I, you know, whatever, fist, it, like you're saying, whatever. Uh, or on Instagram, it's KB Heat. Exactly. It's really actually very simple. Um, and so, yeah, on Sundays, I do the What Had Happened Was podcast. What Happened Was. That's with Angela Hill. Uh, episode 60, 60, I think, would be this week or so. Um, and then uh, on mm, Tuesdays, I do Tuesday Night Festivities with Hanato. This week, we're going to have Rob Font on with us nice. in advance of his upcoming fight. Then we do the Tuesday Night Festivities after party live over on YouTube. We do much more, you know, like fight breakdowns over there. But then it's also kind of like somebody compared us to like Howard Stern and Robin or like a Love Line show or this and that. We do a lot of pop culture. We do a lot of relationship stuff over there. We talk to, there's Vicente there. Good luck tomorrow. Um, uh, we do a lot of um, talking, you know, taking fan questions and stuff. It's loose. I've always wanted to do a late night talk show, so it's kind of like my, that's what I want the feeling to be. People stop in and pop, like Max Payne Griff stops by with us a lot too. It's a lot of fun. 
Yeah, I saw Drew Dober was recently yeah, on. Drew Dober was our guest last week. It was so great. So then Anthony Lionheart Smith came on with him because they were, you know, talking back in the early days of Nebraska MMA. Remember the time when we fought in the place with the thing and the thing? And so, yeah, it's really, that's a really good episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely fun to get your anchoring stuff, but then also the podcast casual talk with yeah. Hanato. Well, you know what it is, is I got to loosen it up because what I've discovered, Alex, is that even though I've done this for a long time, and maybe because I've done this for a long time, um, people kind of think they know you in a certain way, right? Like, yeah. this is literally my 10th year this this month, actually. It might even be my anniversary. That wow, congratulations. Show. Yeah, that Sweden show was my first show with the UFC, so it's 10 years now. But... People, you know, because my role on the show is much more, you know, buttoned up. I'm the bus driver. I'm, I have to, yeah, yeah. Like I, you know, I have to kind of keep everything in, in line. So I don't have as much liberty to play. And I think because of that, people maybe got the idea that, you know, it was kind of more straight laced or more buttoned up or whatever. So that's why I think it's important and fun to do this kind of more ridiculous stuff. So people know, oh, you know, she has a sense of humor. She's, you know, m you know, she can hang. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday night festivities, but Uncle Hanato is going to, you know, force you to do OnlyFans. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> and he's trying to get me to hashtag release the cheeks and stuff like that. Like, no, there will be no KB OnlyFans. There will KB will not be releasing the cheeks. Uh, I already told them. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm like, I've already put my career in jeopardy enough. Uh, kidding aside, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, no, we have fun. Hanato's he's hilarious. Come on. All right, well, you heard it here first. Karen will not be released in the cheeks. That's Karen with a Y, but sometimes we see her as Karen with an E. When are we going to get one of those monologues oh, coming back? Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Boa <laughs> sorte. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, you know what the Karen videos? I do like those, the Karen Karen videos. Uh, the, back. The, yeah. the wig is hilarious. The wig is good. It's a blonde wig. And then somebody was like, I can't believe it. You, you were doing white face. I'm like, no, I didn't do white face. Like, that was just my makeup. I mean, that was just my face. Um, but yeah, no, the Karen Karen, uh, because, you know, Karen's a little bitch. Sometimes she gets uh, mad and complains about stuff. Goes to the, straight to the manager. Exactly. Straight to the manager. I'm sure she's going to find something to complain about soon. I'm well, sure. we can't wait for it. Karen, thank you so much for the time. We'll see you later live tomorrow on the UFC uh, post show yep. and thank you so much for the time. See you next time.